I am Professor of Transport and Telecommunication Institute, and I will moderate our today's evening, which, which uh, I think will be very uh, interesting and very useful for you. Yeah, today, we expect for four interesting presentation, presentations from our colleagues from Deloitte, from uh, Transport and Telecommunication Institute, and uh, after that, we will continue with networking and socializing event. Yeah. So let's start, and uh, we'll start from uh, welcome work from our chairwoman of our board and uh, chief executive officer of Transport and Telecommunication Institute, Professor Irina Yatsky. Thank you very much, and uh, I want to say big thanks everybody who arrived because now it's very important to be together, not only like you know on the video and TV, but also to collaborate and speak with each other face to face. It's very important social networking. I think uh, one of the very important things which I want to mention today is that it's impossible to provide a good education without successful collaboration with business. And for us, it's especially important because we are private university of applied science, and we need to feel a real, real trend in business, in industry, and give our students a very good, very good imagine about their career, about their demanded skills, knowledge, and so on. And uh, according to European Commission, by the way, it's very famous triangle uh, research, business and education. And all these three nodes very important for successful education. And today we try to merge in our auditorium business and education together. And uh, I'm absolutely sure that everybody have added value in this good collaboration because we know that business now very demand good human resource and data analytics, business analytics, people who know how to work with data, very important for them. But for education, also very important to know your demand business, what kind of the task you want that our students solve. Uh, which kind of the skills they need and knowledge which are very important for you. And that's why I'm very happy that we are together with you. And Deloitte, it's our significant strategic partner for our master's program, Data Analytica and Artificial Intelligence. And especially Igor Rodin, he is our academic supervisor, I can say, or advisor of this program. And it's, it's not like only the name. Yes, it's real involvement in our program, in our education process, because maybe some of you know that um, in April and March, yes, Igor um, supervised a special course, uh, economic and AI, yes. And I think our students from our final course in bachelor program of computer science was very happy. They saw another side of the technology and it's important for them. And absolutely sure that you will have some interesting idea after our meeting, during our meeting today. And I hope that it's only one first step in our close collaboration between Deloitte and Transport and Telecommunication Institute. And thank you for your support. It's important for us. Thank you, Professor Yatsky, for welcome words. And uh, now we are ready for our first presentation for today. Yeah, it will be provided by uh, our good friend, uh, Igor Rodin from uh, Deloitte, yeah, who is a partner of Deloitte and a uh, particular interest to uh, application and practicing AI uh, consulting and AI project in different industries. So uh, he exactly know how to implement AI and how to make money from AI. So his presentation today will be devoted to commercialization of AI. So well, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for such a flattering introduction. And I must say, I'm also 
uh, honor to stay here. Had some fantastic memories uh, from this room. I must say that we had kind of uh, my chemistry uh, lessons in this auditorium, and I remember how I was I was enjoying them because uh, I was I like to drink uh, Coca Cola or Pepsi Cola at the time. This is kind of small straw, and then if you put a little bit of vodka in uh, this Pepsi Cola, I mean your chemistry. Uh, lessons uh, went just fantastically well. Kind of, we really enjoyed every uh, minute of it. And also, I remember uh, the kind of the, the sad memory about this uh, particular room is that I, I kind of remember some chemistry and some other lessons I used to study uh, Zen Buddhist uh, Zen Buddhism uh, philosophy. So I had a great book on Zen Buddhist philosophy. Uh, and that was uh, 1983, so that's quite long ago. And I, I forgot this book, uh, I think, in this uh, auditorium on this kind of top second from, from top row, and I couldn't still, still couldn't find it. So if anyone kind of can uh, find this misplaced uh, book, I would appreciate uh, returning to me. So uh, please uh, don't take me seriously. I kind of, my, my studies were full of enjoyment and uh, intellectual, uh, diverse intellectual uh, pursuits. And that's actually what I have done uh, my entire uh, life. I shifted uh, sometimes from uh, topic to topic, but uh, and then uh, coming back to the uh, uh, data, mathematics, science, and uh, engineering, which I guess probably uh, is uh, something that I would enjoy uh, doing uh, uh, for the rest of my life and beyond. And uh, I would like to share uh, some ideas about AI commercialization. Don't take AI uh, topic uh, too serious. Yeah, I'm not so good engineer. Um, okay. I can I can do it differently. Oh, uh, see, let's see if I can. No. Technology or minute? Technology, yeah. Uh, I shouldn't be. I, I, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be really teaching this lesson. I, I should be drinking Coca Cola with vodka, and that's, I think that's how, how I will do really well. I'm sorry. Sorry for that. My kind of technology skills are still limited. And then this is uh, the topics which uh, I would. Uh, I wish I could cover uh, in the in the in this session, uh, but I don't have enough time, so I, I only cover first of, uh, first of those two, and the, the third one, you can use your kind of guessing imagination and uh, kind of extend it uh, beyond, uh, uh, beyond this particular class, so take it, uh, uh, take it please yourself. I must say, uh, all what I'm uh, going to share, these are my kind of personal observations, the, not based on uh, hard science, uh, but you probably wouldn't read them in any particular uh, book. It's something that I kind of came uh, towards with my kind of own uh, journey uh, of uh, discovering uh, AI, uh, AI business. And basically, I mean, if you look at uh, with all the kind of uh, uh, kind of cleverness of AI, artificial intelligence, I mean, basically. Uh, what AI commercial AI means. I mean, you need our artificial intelligence uh, for only reason. If it does a uh, job better than people and it can do a uh, job better than people, basically people replace people in uh, making decisions. If it makes those decisions either quicker, makes better decision or makes those decision faster. Ideally, all of these three, but if one of these things is there, it's kind of there is a business case uh, for artificial intelligence. And I will share uh, three. Uh, I will share the two companies, two stories of artificial intelligence, and uh, some lessons that can be learned uh, from uh, 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 from those two companies. And the first one, of course, uh, you know very well, uh, is uh, Netflix. Uh, the, uh, the movie company and I think the whole kind of idea of uh, business in Netflix is that you can uh, go uh, to the site, you watch the film, you search and uh, Netflix gives you the ideas of other films that you may like to watch. So there's a 
very powerful, very useful uh, recommend system. And there's a great theory, this huge uh, number of books written about recommendation system recommenders, how they should work, they should achieve. And basically they kind of the theory can be kind of digested in maybe one single sentence. Uh, it should give you good recommendations. Your attention span is about 60 seconds. So it should give you good recommendations and present those kind of recommendations. You should find something that you would like in 60 seconds. Otherwise your kind of attention will diverge and uh, you will no longer be interested and you, you will move to some other uh, to some other pursuit. Uh, and I'll, 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 I'll come back to some of the things uh, that uh, Netflix has kind of discovered in their uh, journey uh, to recommend the system. But maybe to start with this, uh, you see those kind of some of the uh, some of the screens where Netflix started with this famous uh, Netflix price 2007, where it announced uh, this million dollar price for the best recommended system. It's something that would recommend films that uh, you would like. And that's what they have been uh, doing before. Uh, the global price currently kind of uh, made a huge, uh, not apparent, but made a huge leap uh, in uh, science around uh, recommendation system. But for Netflix, that was uh, kind of one of the steps in their journey towards implementing artificial intelligence. And there's quite, a, they, share, uh, they share quite a lot in the technical blocks. So you can uh, actually, it's very interested if you're kind of have general interest in artificial intelligence and data science, because application of this data science is a good one. It's something you can personally, uh, personally could connect to. And uh, so they started with kind of giving recommended, re recommended films. And this, you recommend the film, so you show the kind of the, uh, the picture of the film, and then uh, of several pictures of several films, the thumb, what they call the thumbnails, and then the uh, name of the film and maybe short, uh, short description. And that's where Netflix has started. And they moved on actually to personalizing those pictures because they discovered, for example, if you have uh, for example, if you like a particular act, actor and a different actors in the film, so there's something good to recommend you a film with that actor that you like. For example, if you like whatever Bruce Willis and there are a number of actors in that film, they would recommend, they will use the recommendation uh, kind of screen, the particular picture where your favorite actor is kind of depicted. So for many kind of pictures that exist for that film, they will uh, select that one. But that, that actually what they have discovered later on is uh, those uh, kind of collect collections of pictures which individual films, they were not very good for the screens. First, they were designed for big uh, uh, black, the blackboards, the sideboards, uh, so for the different format, they're not very good for the very kind of small thumbnails and uh, they don't necessarily present the best description of the film. So what they did, they start using artificial intelligence for selecting actually the best frames that will desc describe the film in a particular section. And what they did is actually, so the, every film is split into the kind of number of uh, individual kind of shots. And then you can imagine they're probably kind of two, three, 400,000 uh, individual shots in the film. So artificial intelligence engine is actually selects the best shot the best in terms of the content, the best in terms of the particular actors, in terms of the quality, they should be less blur, they should be certain kind of position of faces, they should be of uh, kind of uh, certain quality and size uh, in, in proportion uh, to the small thumbnail that is shown. So there's a lot of uh, kind of thinking ideas that uh, went behind those algorithms that actually using this whole film to kind of cut individual kind of uh, in individual screens and select them to you in a personalized way. So that's actually the next uh, uh, step in the journey using artificial intelligence for personalization. And actually one of the things that Netflix is currently using according to their blog is they're using this artificial intelligence for designing uh, the, uh, the movie uh, scripts, the, the narratives for the movie. And it's not that, that there's artificial intelligence that writes the script, but there are certain features of the film that makes it popular so that you can use the algorithms, artificial intelligence analysis to uh, discover what the particular features of the film, what the particular elements of the script would make it particularly popular 
for a particular audience. For example, that's some, something that they are currently, for example, looking at Latvia to shooting their films is because it is targeted for kind of European audience. You need to have films that are shot on the kind of European base. So there's a journey of artificial intelligence, starting with the core of using the recommend the recommend the system uh, towards making a more complex use of uh, artificial intelligence. And that would Something I would like to share the uh, the kind of the power behind uh, success of Netflix, and that's what I said uh, in the beginning. The story of Netflix is basically a story of creating a company that is uh, uh, based on artificial intelligence, where these artificial intelligence algorithms at the core of the business, and it uh, has been forced in February of this year a quarter of a trillion uh, dollars. It's one of the most valuable companies. And the, and the power behind is this gentleman, uh, Reed Hastings, and I will share you a few other photographs of some other people in their kind of artificial intelligence business world. And I think what kind of my conclusions, what unites those people is maybe three characteristics. I think they're sufficiently competent in the te technical area. So it's not that they're data scientists or the technologists in, with the big T, but uh, they understand the uh, they, they understand the area, they understand their artificial intelligence, and they have a particular passion for it. So then they are really hard driving business, business people. They aim to perfect the use of artificial intelligence and perfect the use of their uh, business, uh, business model. And I'll just illustrate you this in a second. And the third element is that uh, these people have very special personalities, they're very different. And again, maybe the next slide will illustrate this. This is one of the many famous uh, quotes that comes from uh, Reed Hastings. And basically what it says, and that's kind of philosophy of Netflix, what it says that uh, the good people are fired. We don't need good people. We only want excellent people at Netflix. We want to be the best in uh, our sphere, we want to be the best company, we want to be the, have the best in AI, and we, have, we want to have the, the best experts, just the best experts. So the good experts are not just good enough. So that's kind of incessant drive for the perfection and uh, for the being number one. I don't say that we kind of all, every company in the world need to share this ethos and, uh, and uh, uh, be copying Netflix, but I think it kind of tells something about what what really made them uh, uh, number one. Uh, and as I said, one of the most famous uh, kind of events that actually made data science globally very popular, and perhaps one of the reasons why you are here is this data science is extremely kind of it, it became not only a, a pop not only the kind of basically it became a household name and it became famous that you can make money in data science it, it became an occupation that really pays well in addition to a lot of things it's just let's be uh, let's be honest about it and uh, uh of the elements in this kind of discovery of data science by the population of the globe was this netflix prize where they awarded uh, one million dollar uh, to the best algorithm actually not to the best algorithm, but to the algorithm that hits specific uh, uh, kind of mathematical target uh, uh, first, which I will share, I will, I will share uh, in a second. And what I would also share, uh, and this is particular kind of uh, event of uh, getting this uh, prize, there were something like, uh, if I remember well, uh, 4,000 uh, uh, teams that participated in this competition. Uh, some 20,000 people across the world. I think oh, I remember well there's some 160 countries. And I didn't recognize that data science actually exists in 160 countries around the world, but that was a team. And actually, just also to be clear, the team was international. No, no, no individual team has been able to kind of get there. So this is actually a, a, a team that combined a number of people from different countries, including Germans, uh, Israelis, and Americans. Uh, who are part of this Belcor uh, Bel team. And then I think it uh, illustrates very well some of the uh, innovative, in, in, innovative 
uh, approaches uh, that is uh, now became almost ubiquitous is crowdsourcing in data science. And you can crowdsource, it's uh, crowdsourcing and artificial intelligence. And you, you can crowdsource many things. Of course, you can crowdsource funds for your artificial intelligence startups. You can crowdsource uh, data, you can crowdsource data labeling. Uh, but in this particular instance, uh, Netflix crowdsource data science, crowdsource models, right? So they use this kind of hype, the gamification to get the best. And actually, they did the best. They, get, they, 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 they did uh, very far. Uh, and now, almost to become all, a, anyone who matters in data science, you need to apparently participate in those hackathons, win uh, whatever, uh, get in uh, those uh, competitions and, and, and so forth. And, and I, I would like also maybe to share my view of, uh, of those events. Uh, is, a, is a fantastic thing. It's just kind of, it's a, it's an invention. Uh, and maybe some of you would not uh, uh, would not agree with me, uh, but they, they have real problems. If you have, uh, kind of do hackathons with uh, fake data, then uh, you will actually lo lose the excitement and uh, you don't get the benefit of getting the insights from the data. And if you get kind of run hackathon on real data, the data will eventually be de-anonymized. It's just like law of statistics. Every, everything can be made uh, kind of anonymous, uh, anonymity of any kind of data set can be broken. And the larger the data set, then can easily be broken. It will not be kind of, you will not get 100% uh, certainty that uh, you collect the, kind of the right information on kind of some personal behavior, some personal information, but you get a very high certainty. And it's just law, kind of uh, first course of mathematics, the law of the combinatorics. Uh, and that's something which I think Netflix have learned uh, in a hard way, because when they did this uh, Netflix prize competition, they obviously have a lawsuit and they have actually a nasty lawsuit and they have settled out of the court. But maybe the big finding for artificial intelligence out of this lawsuit, and I can actually I, I show here the, on the right this kind of lawsuit application in American court, and the left side is this kind of one of these papers. And these papers that uh, have been submitted, the uh, the condition of competition uh, is that all these uh, uh, papers, scientific papers, they're all published. Uh, but what I want to say, the the if you look from a balance sheet perspective for those who know accounting you have liabilities on that side and you have assets on the on the left side netflix i think did very correctly they look at from a reputation balance sheet perspective it's not the problem that you have some reputational issues of uh, kind of disclosing personal data i think the reality is that it's important that what possible uh positive uh reputation you have created uh, by launching this prize and uh, driving data science forward. It's actually hard to accept, and I would say my organization would never accept this argument that you can take kind of reputational uh, risks and you can uh, accept re reputational losses. But I think that's a reality. You, you should drive the science forward and uh, you should uh, count on your losses as well as your, on your wins. And that's something which I would also like to share with you uh, is, uh, uh, how actually good is the data science? And this is something for those of you who are interested in uh, in data science. It's uh, actually maybe interested. You may be interested to compare. So this is the uh, slide that shows the statistics of uh, uh, various applications. And you can just I, I can I can show you. So on a uh, y-axis on a vertical axis, you can see the number of teams that uh, kind of. Uh, uh, made their contributions, so you can see what kind of uh, the number the number of teams. And on a horizontal axis, you see from zero to negative numbers to positive numbers. This is the improvement. That's an improvement from the uh, existing algorithm. And the target was uh, ten percent. So the target for the price was ten percent improvement. And this is now preliminary result. So that's not the final result. I can get the statistics on the final result. 
So I, I classified the mathematics of those kind of data science that has been used there kind of in accordance to my own criteria. So, uh, and I would, we wouldn't have time to go into, I think it's great fun for those who like it. Uh, but you see, there's a lot of people, I would say, the kind of the mathematics uh, uh, that they have used is kind of probably the six, uh, that's a sixth grade in a kind of normal school. And then the most of the people, I would say, that's a uni university, uh, university level statistics. And you probably study this in the kind of second uh, year in, uh, uh, in university. And that should be good enough for you to get those results below, uh, actually below zero. So you probably get there where you wanted to get, where, where Netflix was uh, what we're getting, which just kind of standard, uh, standard statistical processing. And then, uh, and something like, uh, uh, from two to, I would say, five percent, you have methods such as uh, uh, singular value decomposition, which I would say that's a standard. That's a standard machine learning. That's 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 good enough. That's not that very simple, and that's I would say that's that's good enough. Uh, that's something that you can proper machine learning. And then from six percent onwards, and then you see that's a very small proportion of data scientists actually who kind of fall into this category. I would say that's a clever stuff. And then you should really read those articles. If you want to know why this is clever, read those articles. That's quite ingenious. And I would say, um, how was, what's the English? Uh, what's the English word? Trivial, some of the trivial approaches. Very, 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 very fun to read. So if you, if you enjoy it, read those articles, find them on Google, and that's you see those uh, clever, clever inventions. So I think data science is fun. First, you can see you, you use this data science in kind of very interesting ways, for example, here to get your movie scored. And then uh, you need to be clever. You need not, not also only be mathematically clever. You just need to be clever and find some kind of inventive ways of uh, improving your uh, data science. And I don't have time to repeat it. And actually, does this data, does this uh, data science actually help? And the question is, uh, and I this also I did some kind of study to just to find what is the percentage of the really good film uh, some, uh, being predicted uh, by the uh, by the algorithm and getting into this kind of first five recommended slots if you haven't screened the five films that you're recommending and of course uh, the kind of the good film that you kind of supposedly score five kind of no supposedly just score five need to be get uh, need to be, be on on top of or uh, on top and this is uh, again we don't have time uh, uh, to go and it just shows a probability that this good film uh, goes in uh, into top five uh, out of random 1000. So you see the kind of the existing algorithms that have been uh, using but Netflix before competition, they give you about 20% probability. And uh, one of the uh, preliminary leader uh, gives 35 35% probability. So actually the, uh, the some incremental improvements in uh, kind of data science algorithms, they do matter. The, the, this inventiveness, this kind of creativity, actually does create value in in a, in a particular business setting. So the not for free Netflix paid a million. Uh, I must say they haven't used it. They for again a variety of different reasons they haven't used it. And now maybe a few words about how artificial intelligence saved the world. And that's something about the messenger RNA uh, vaccine, uh, the Moderna and the. Uh, Maybe some of you have uh, used uh, Moderna vaccine uh, to vaccinate yourself, including myself. Uh, and the story here is very simple. Uh, Moderna uh, created uh, their uh, vaccine, the kind of the vaccine prototype within two days from it being kind of sequenced in China. So once Chinese kind of sequenced DNA of the uh, COVID virus, they kind of uh, made it publicly available. It took uh, artificial intelligence uh, algorithms in Moderna to create vaccines, it took them two days. And then it has been, uh, been moved to the production and it's been a little bit more than a month before they start product, product, uh, producing those vaccines, not in laboratory, actually in the factory that uh, it took them about a month that this kind of uh, factory vaccines can be uh, shipped for uh, uh, clinical tests. 
and then maybe a few words about kind of things that made this happen. And that's not uh, a coincidence. Just you know, another sort, another name is a kind of a Lebanese Armenian uh, American citizen, Mubarafian. He's also a great, he's a scientist. Uh, he's a believer in technology and artificial intelligence and very great thinker. So if you uh, want to watch his uh, videos and some of his interviews on artificial intelligence and startups, I think he's one of the deepest thinkers. And I think what I would actually recommend to uh, pay attention uh, the way kind of and this, his, his business is called flagship pioneering. This is kind of the kind of startup ecosystem or the the, the, the organization, the, his organization that he develops those kind of startups. There's something like 50 or 60 of them. So Madero is only one of those vaccines. So maybe what I would like you uh, for you kind of the idea that I would like to get is that typically when you look at many startups uh, and including artificial intelligence, those the, the, they, they come, there's a ideal unsorted need uh, uh, unserved need of, of a customer. This, uh, and then you build a uh, so-called minimal value proposition uh, to kind of address this unserved need. And the way uh, this gentleman, Nubar, uh, has built it, he's built it totally in a different way, in an absolutely uh, different uh, manner with all normal startups. Uh, he has been uh, commercializing AI science. So he looked for a scientific invention without having a faintest idea, will this be commercial? What, what would be the use? And you probably will not be able to uh, kind of be whatever. Uh, no one needed a COVID vaccine. You, there's no unserved need for COVID vaccine because no one first needed, knew that COVID is coming. That's number one. And there were no one has been uh, thinking that you need to have a vaccine uh, has, that has been produced in two days. The need didn't exist. So the scientific invention for messenger RNA came first, and there was a belief that you can do this scientific invention, you can grow into something commercial. And I think that's actually a very, uh, a very fruitful, a very productive idea how that kind of real innovation should happen. And they just want to leave it with you. And again, it's very, very interesting way how uh, his company, which is called Flagship Pioneering, is actually developing this scientific innovation and growing the business. And something he recognized very, very early on when this kind of uh, scientific discovery of messenger RNA has been done to make it commercially, you need to you need to find another crazy guy to make it kind of a business, to make it commercial. And he find a crazy guy. He's a French guy, Stéphane Bancel. He wasn't either a kind of a data scientist. He was neither a biotechnology com company, but he's quite crazy enough. And then again, this is a famous quote by uh, Stéphane. He's actually, he was running the biotechnology company as he was running, as he would be running Google. He, he, he understood the vaccine business is not a vaccine business artificial intelligence business. It's all about how good your artificial intelligence is and your speed to make vaccine. So his idea is not like you have many hundreds of companies that can make vaccine in a kind of year, a year and a half, but the idea is to create in a couple of days. And maybe you can show you the, uh, let's see. Drug Design Studio, developed by our in-house software engineering team, is the front end of the research engine. Using the Drug Design Studio, scientists can digitally design and order mRNA constructs for use in research and preclinical studies through a secure portal. They begin by selecting existing proteins to be further engineered, or they create novel proteins from existing domain scaffolds and other sequences. Next, the selected protein sequence is converted into an mRNA sequence. Proprietary algorithms consider sequence, structure, and other factors to identify mRNA sequences that are predicted to confer desired pharmacologic uh, properties. So what I think, what I would like to uh, uh, to leave with you those two thoughts. It's it's a critical for. Uh, it was critical. The recommending the recommender system was a critical business element for Netflix. 
So Netflix did everything possible to make the world's best recommender system. Uh, the artificial intelligence for developing vaccine very quickly was a critical business process for Moderna. And they did absolutely everything possible to create those best algorithms. And they have written themselves. So in both ca cases, it's not that they have bought a kind of ready-made packages and they kind of use those packages. Because you can't. If you can buy something on the market, then you will not become number one because someone else can, uh, can buy it as well. And that's what they have been quickly, very carefully and very clever in understanding for the key process, for the key competence in organization. You should do yourself. You should develop this competence and develop artificial intelligence on your own. While for the rest, you should just best buy and best breed. And I show you examples of some of the technologies that they were using to enable the kind of running of the business organization. And particularly, one of the clear things that they have done, they were moved to cloud and they were starting using Amazon Web Services in uh, back in 2012. By, by the time, actually, I, I must be honest, I, I didn't know what uh, Amazon services are. So this is like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell if someone would ask me why the cloud is needed. So these guys were very, and this is, I think, a key, key success factor for them. So they, they, would, they, they, they have this vision, this, this guy, Stefan Ansel, he has this vision how to run the business so it's more successful in getting this, uh, getting uh, to the, Kind of objective of producing vaccines, uh, vaccines fast. Number one, uh, best in class artificial intelligence. Number two, package solutions, the best in class package solution for the rest. And number number three, kind of data platform that unites and makes kind of seamless connection of all the data that works within the organization. I think this is some of the success factors that comes from those uh, two companies. They create a huge value. They create a huge value for shareholders, and Moderna create a huge value for planet. So I uh, only can uh, can 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 tell you and can share. Working in this field is 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 great because I think you really add value. You add value to in 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 business. There's so many things how you can improve the business performance and create successful organizations. So I hope uh, that you share this sentiment. I think probably some of you are there and you would listen to my colleagues what, what it means to get successful careers in the area of data and artificial intelligence. And maybe some of those uh, uh, stories, uh, stories of Moderna and uh, uh, Netflix, they will inspire you and give you some, some guidance what can be done. So thank you for the attention. And then I would uh, pass uh, now the word to uh, Dmitry. Yep. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, good afternoon once again. Yeah, it's my turn to present you a presentation named Data Analytics and Artificial Intelligence. Why do you need it? Yeah, it's uh, devoted to, to the public. And uh, when I formulated and started preparing this uh, presentation, I collected a lot of reasons why it could be interesting for you, uh, starting from the growing market demand on jobs in AI, a uh, well paying demand and uh, going to very active and fast growing and interesting community in this area. And actually just uh, ending up with just curiosity of uh, application of AI data analytics in our real life. Uh, and when I almost completed my presentation, uh, I found that uh, it looks like a Captain Obvious. Why I need to explain, why do you need it? Because everybody uh, speak, speak about uh, uh, data analytics and uh, 
everybody uh, use this as a buzzword. Yeah, many people say that we're using or going to use it in their companies as a strategic plan. And uh, mm, many people say that we're using data analytics and artificial intelligence without actually a real understanding of what's this. And uh, we have a lot of data around us, which comes from sensors, from video surveillance, and so on. It's already here. We all know that this is important. And this is trendy and modern. So I slightly uh, reformulated yeah, my presentation from why do you need it uh, to why not? Yeah, why not to uh, study and apply data analytics and artificial intelligence? And I collected uh, seven uh, most widely used skeptical opinions about uh, data analytics and artificial intelligence, and uh, probably discovered that it's uh, most of them are incorrect ones or myths uh, about uh, data analytics and artificial intelligence and its applications. So let's go from, uh, from the first one. Yeah, the myths are from different sides, from side of business, from side of general uh, public, from just of uh, uh, companies. Yeah, so we will start from the most widely uh, used uh, myth that uh, artificial intelligence and data analytics is something which is very complicated and very complex and looks like a rocket science and we will never understand how to use it in our business and it will be too difficult for us. Okay, it's completely not true. Completely not true. And I provided here a couple of statements from uh, quite famous researchers uh, in the sphere of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, in reality, all these models and all these algorithms are just computations just the same as any other algorithm which we apply in our real life. The first one uh, is a quote from uh, Robert Brooks, a researcher who say uh, that when the team developed a new artificial intelligence algorithm uh, and presented this, they said, oh, it's not interesting, it's not really intelligent. Yeah, it's just, just a computation, just a program. Yeah, uh, and the same, exactly the same was uh, presented for previous examples of super intelligent algorithms. For example, uh, seven or maybe more years ago, uh, Alpha Zero was presented as super computer program, which beats any uh, chess champion in the world easily. But uh, after we presented via algorithm, we said, okay, it's just a computation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not fair, it's not intelligent anymore, yeah. And actually, the same thing here is uh, named Tesla theorem, uh, which is which says, shortly, yeah, uh, artificial intelligence is whatever haven't been done yet. So once we implemented an algorithm, once we understand how it works, it's not a magic anymore. Yeah, it's not an intelligent anymore. Uh, but the reality is that uh, there are a lot of things which have been done here. And we just need to apply uh, these things for our business needs or in our real life. And we not need to know how to apply all of them. So this is the first myth. The second myth uh, is uh, related to data, yeah, especially to understanding of data in real, uh, in real public. But data is something like numbers. And for example, I'm a linguist, I'm working with text, I don't like to work with numbers. Okay, again, nowadays data are not numbers. Yeah, under the data in data analytics and artificial intelligence things, uh, we mostly work with uh, other entities. Of course, with numbers, but still data. Yeah, but also uh, we deal with texts, different kind of texts, classical books or uh, social media texts, posts, and so on. Yeah, and we need to handle them and make value for them. Next is images. Again, we have a lot of photos. We have uh, medical scans. Uh, we have uh, mm, geo-imagery pictures, which also can be useful. Even if you are not keen on data analytics, you can use all these data yeah, for your, uh, your own needs yeah, in your business or in hobby or as you prefer. Yeah, another type of data is video movies. It's also it's quite a popular 
uh, source of data. Recently, I again, we have a lot of uh, video surveillance and uh, movies and so on. Uh, so if you think that data is about numbers and you're afraid of numbers, you're a linguist or you're working in different directions, so please don't be afraid of this. Uh, it's not completely not true. Yeah, data analytics work with different types of data. Next, uh, next skeptical opinion is about the audience. And uh, I heard several times that data analytics and artificial intelligence is for mathematicians and for programmers you need to be a good uh, coder or quite a uh, famous mathematician to apply this. Uh, and actually, uh, it was true. It was true around of 20, maybe slightly more years ago, uh, when you need to be a good mathematician to develop a relatively simple artificial neural network. And you need to be a good programmer to implement them. This, uh, this model uh, is a software and you need to train it and to apply in your real business. Yeah, it was true, but now it's not. Now it's not. Uh, of course, you need for some math, you need for some coding uh, practices or coding skills to run everything and to, to contain the results, to understand the results. But uh, nowadays, uh, there are a lot of DA and AI algorithms models which are ready to use almost out of box. Uh, you can just uh, make it a pretty request. Yeah, an API request to the service with AI and obtain quite intelligent results. You just need to understand how to use it. Yeah, and you just need to understand which service to use and which model is good in this particular case. Uh, finally, uh, here um, we're developing, yeah, it's, it's more and more useful, more and more convenient to use the AI and AI models here. And, uh, Majority of us are like good car drivers without real understanding how the engine of a car is working inside. So uh, DA and AI models in goes in this direction. Yeah, many people try to use it even without going into the nuts and bolts of these models. Of course, to be the best in this area, you need to go into nuts and bolts. But just to use it, uh, it's okay to uh, understand the general principles of selection and uh, advantages and disadvantages of the different models. Next myth is number four, uh, that uh, it's from more proficient people who heard something about data analytics and about artificial intelligence and uh, says that it uh, knows that it's necessary to have a lot of data to train uh, different uh, models or AI solutions. And uh, for example, I heard this several times from the companies, we have a small company, we have only 100 observations, for example, 100 clients who don't have enough data to train all these super, uh, super complex algorithms. And without this data, we can't use it. Okay, uh, this is also not true. Yeah. Uh, even if your company is relatively small, even if you have a limited number of uh, observations, you still can use these modern algorithms. Uh, first of all, uh, the majority of, pro of problems we are solving are not unique. Yeah, and some components of them are not unique. For example, uh, if we need to measure customer satisfaction level on the base of his or via face recognition, it's not necessary to use your customers to collect the data and train of uh, face recognition algorithms, uh, algorithms for your own data. There are already trained models which are good in this direction. And these models can be successfully used at least as a part of your problem. Uh, another possible solution here is uh, related to emergent techniques, which, is, which are called something like domain adoption, adaptation, or uh, transfer learning, where we have an algorithm which is trained to do one task and apply it to another task. For example, if we have a well-trained algorithm for urban traffic forecasting, it can be with relatively small effort applied for 
stock exchange rate forecasting. You don't need to completely retrain uh, this algorithm. You just need to uh, slightly adapt it to your area. Probably in this case, a small amount of data, but of course good data will be enough to uh, transform this algorithm and apply it to your own area. So if you're thinking about application and uh, concern about amount of data, uh, it's not always true. Next, uh, next is opinion about, uh, about your career. Yeah, our today's event is about career in area of the DA and AI. And many people think that uh, the AI and the AI are for, is for um, tech nerds, for people who uh, pursue or sometimes successfully pursue on technologies and you will sit on a computer and uh, look into the running numbers or something like this. And this is completely not true. I probably my colleagues from, from business will explain uh, and highlight this. Uh, the work of data analytics is not sitting at the computer. It's highly interdisciplinary right now. You need to communicate with different people and co co collect and understand needs of different businesses. Yeah, especially it's important if you are working for a consultancy company yeah, and uh, you try to make uh, money for your clients. You need to understand the needs. You need to understand uh, the limits and uh, mm, some problems. So uh, you need to know advantages of different AI algorithms and need to know uh, how to use them. And of course, it's impossible to be the only person who understands everything and can apply any algorithm. So definitely nowadays, data analytics and artificial intelligence application is a teamwork. Yeah, you need to communicate, you need to contact other person, and other persons in your team, in your company. And uh, it's not a nerdy job. Yeah. Uh, actually, it gives you an opportunity to continue your career, not exactly in the area of data analytics, but in some specific area. Uh, for example, if you found yourself in 10 or 20 years interested in the stock market, probably you can go deeper in this particular domain and with knowledge on data analytics will be okay. Yeah, and uh, this topic nowadays opens you quite a lot of different career paths in future. Next, uh, next also quite popular uh, myth is that, okay, nowadays I can learn data analytics and artificial intelligence myself. We have a lot of courses like on Coursera or Udemy or other platforms, which allows me to learn it. I have a lot of YouTube videos from top speakers. So I will uh, look at this and I'll be a nice specialist. And again, uh, it's not completely true. Yeah, of course you can obtain some technical skills. Yeah, by watching these videos. For example, you will be able to uh, run uh, an artificial intelligence models in Python after looking at video, but it will be just a little example. Yeah, as I said previously, data analytics and artificial intelligence are mostly uh, not about technical skills, very quiet, but not only when required. It's more about problem solving, problem understanding, yeah, it's solving skills and your adaptability skills. And to obtain them, you need to learn it not along with your computer. Yeah, you need to communicate with other teammates. You need to communicate with professionals from industry, uh, with professors, with other people who uh, understand something, who have different opinion uh, on the same thing and uh, probably enhance your study process. Uh, also, in addition, yeah, it's not always a fun to study. Yeah, and many people need for an atmosphere a creative atmosphere to continue their study. Yeah, for example, I can concentrate on something for 10 minutes, but if I'm just along and watching a YouTube video, my attention will be spread quite soon, uh, at least much faster when I'm working in the group. Yeah, so it's uh, another uh, myth here. 
And uh, the last one, myth, is that data analytics uh, is a high paying job. Okay, this is actually not a myth. Uh, it's included here, but it's really a high paid job. Yeah, uh, here on the slide, I presented you the salaries in Germany or, or on the mm, left side of the slide. Uh, Germany, UK, Netherlands, and uh, usually uh, it's three times higher than average salaries in these countries. There is the salaries of people who work in data analytics. Also note that uh, it's important to have formal education. Yeah, the darker columns are for higher education. Yeah, and the darkest one is for PhD and the previous one is for master. So their salaries are quite significantly, significantly differ in a positive way from the previous levels. So uh, it's not a myth, but uh, there is a thing which uh, concerns me, at least at this moment. Yeah, it's related to the development of these technologies in Latvia. And this is another picture here on the right hand side. Uh, this is amount of companies who, which are really uses AI in their business. Latvia is in the last place here with 2% of companies uh, which uses, yeah, it's some with 10 or more people, yeah, which uses uh, this for their business. Yeah, it was a year ago, but I don't think that it significantly uh, differs right now. So the market at this moment is not so large, but there are two things here. First of all, this market is international. Yeah, so you can work in different countries for different clients. And second, this market is definitely growing. And it's always a problem if you have uh, some management or economic uh, background, you understand that it's always easier and more beneficial to enter into the almost empty market. Yeah. And uh, so I think that this is a good point to enter into data analytics and artificial intelligence tools and apply your knowledge, your passion in this area. And uh, I hope that our today's meeting will help you in this direction. And from our side, we also will try to help you. Yeah, this is a couple of words about our uh, double degree master program. Uh, so double degree of Transport and Telecommunication Institute and our partner from the University of West England. Yeah, and here is a couple of facts about this program, uh, just short, uh, but uh, important from my point of view. First of all, we propose uh, obtaining two diplomas, one from Transport and Telecommunication Institute, which is European Union diploma, yeah, and another from uh, UVA, which is uh, UK diploma. Sometimes it's important to have formal education in this area. Uh, next, the feature of this program is that we are proposed, we, we're suggesting and we are accepting uh, students without ICT background yeah, into this program. But with experience in data analytics and actually passion to data analytics and artificial intelligence. Uh, so if you concern about your future career and you want to switch your career path from uh, whatever you have right now, your yeah, management or logistics or uh, other areas, and you think about career in this area, probably this is a good moment to switch it. Next, uh, it's high support from industry. And I think our today's event uh, is an illustration of this. We have generally uh, excellent presentations from uh, Deloitte, and uh, this is our main partners, one of my main partners on this program. So we highly appreciate it. Also, uh, good professors, good professors and good professionals in this program who ensure that uh, your study will go smoothly and you will have an added value from this. Okay, yeah, that was a minute of advertisement, but actually, the open day. Uh, this program will be tomorrow, or probably will organize several other open days, and you're always uh, free to come or contact me directly on any uh, technical questions here. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, yeah, while we are switching to another presentation, I will present uh, my colleague. Uh, 
PhD or Dr. Raman Tarav. <laughs> Raman Tarav, who is uh, AI and data director at the Deloitte. Yeah. And uh, actually uh, have quite a lot of experience in big data engineering with application in different industries and different countries. Yeah, I tried to list a lot of them here. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also Raman have uh, experience in higher education. So probably he have a good understanding how the industry and uh, education goes together, go together. So, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the floor is yours. And Thank yours. you. Thank you. Yeah, I did uh, one of the best like a presentation of myself. Guys, yeah? so, <laughs> um, I would love to like add something, but I can't. Yeah, so actually too much words to good about me. Yeah, but uh, really happy to be here. Um, you know, yeah, that's true. I'm actually uh, a former, I would say, colleague. Yeah, well, Dmitry, I used to be uh, um, a faculty as well in RTU, uh, my alma mater, uh, and actually stopped doing that. Yeah, so I was a docent there. And the reason was just that uh, pandemic time when I could not make lecturing over the screen, you know, and that's why I'm actually excited to be here. Okay, it's like a not full auditorium, but still there are like a live people. Thanks you, so you came here. So actually, hopefully I will enjoy speaking. Yes, it was two years I was not speaking to the auditorium. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain. <laughs> yeah, so actually my presentation of today as I devoted. Uh, uh, actually, not about the AI or analytics, yeah. So, but it's about consulting and technology consulting. Um, Why well, I've selected this topic? Uh, first of all, yeah, this is a joint event, yeah. So between SAI and uh, and Deloitte, and uh, we are doing consulting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are doing consulting. Actually, many people are kind of doing consulting. I mean, in terms of doing consulting. When you will select your job, uh, you will see how, okay, this is in-house development. This is some kind of media company, yeah, so telco company. There is some kind of software house. There is a consulting, consulting, consulting. But what does it mean, consult? Yeah, and I'm uh, second time, yeah, so extremely happy. And thank you to, 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 to the dean, yeah, so that we can speak about this topic now here at the university. Uh, because trust me, um, so little uh, universities in Latvia or actually post-Soviet Union uh, space uh, are speaking about actually modern approaches in the business and how the technology is applied over the business. Yeah, so and it's very, I, I would say that uh, you guys are super happy because actually we have several, uh, several schools with whom business uh, and universities from business in Latvia are cooperating. Yeah, so and uh, big thanks to Igor, my colleague, we actually started that uh, very energetically. Uh, fortunately, started just in the 21st century. I mean, <laughs> we started to speak about business and technology, but still it's very important, I believe, for every uh, student of nowadays to understand that we are not just learning Java, we're not just learning algorithms, we're not just learning math, but actually we should be ready to apply it to the real life. You know, um, yeah, I have my PhD and actually learned that. So, I mean, the most valuable thing out of my PhD course was that actually I did it wrong. You know, I did it wrong. I did it like a fundamental type of thing while I've been in RCU that it's very much hands on stuff, hands on universe. Um, and uh, several, uh, several guys whom I used to know, yeah, so have started as well. I PhD, their PhDs in the same year as myself. And I was like observing what they were doing, yeah, um, and what extent they have uh, have reached. And you know, uh, two of them made a fantastic, fantastic progress. Yeah. So one of that guy, guys, uh, he actually sent his IoT sensors to the space. By the moment, I wrote the papers, yeah, so about my fundamental researches <laughs> on IoT topic that uh, no one actually needed, yeah, so in the, in the world. Actually, this is uh, this is very important. Yeah? So there are two aspects. Yeah, so learning an academical and another professional. So if you are not for academia, not for the science, so try to learn so much. Yeah, so and so uh, tightly connected. Yes, yeah? so with the needs of the world today and after five and ten years. And actually, that's a fund fundamental thing I believe in a university and keeping that in mind. Yeah, so that we are not uh, learning to, I mean, code Java 
Yeah, so, but we have learned, of course, about thinking and applying it to the real life. And that's why I would like to speak now about consulting, saying, what does it mean consulting? Yeah, so, and uh, how it's how it differs. And uh, so that you could actually, I hope, yeah, so that you could actually then understand, yeah, so where, where there is a consulting, where is a buzzword of the consulting? Yeah? Um, okay. Yay, I made it. Yeah. I would love, of course, to see it here, yeah. So, but I actually see it not very, very much well. Okay, so, um, so what we will we will see, yeah. So, what does it mean? A consulting as mentioned, yeah. Uh, I would like to tell what how how consulting actually evaluated uh, evolution of the consulting and actually this post COVID world, yeah. So, it's not only about uh, learning and lecturing, as I mentioned, yeah. So, it's very tough for me, yeah, to lecture and. Say, into the uh, into the monitor, yeah. So, but as well, um, our world of jobs, yes, yeah? so and the world of consulting as well will be changing, yes. Yeah? So, and that's actually a topic that I would like I would like to cover as well. So, um, we'll not stop here, yeah. So, because yeah, so actually we have not such kind of a lecture uh, to speak about that, but there is a big difference between consulting and in house. Yeah, what does it mean in house? Uh, first of all. Uh, I mean, 95% of tech jobs that we can find on a job market today are considered to be in-house. So actually, some, some solutions that are done for a, for a means yeah, so of a specific company, like in Nikos presentation that was mentioned, yeah, so Netflix uh, recommendation engine. Netflix is like an in-house thing. Yeah? Consulting would be, uh, would be something where that uh, the business is asking, let's say, OK, look, guys. We know we can apply artificial intelligence. About that. That's a great thing. We can apply it in our business. We heard about like recommendation engines. But yeah, unfortunately, we don't have that, that knowledge and know-how. Can you please come to us and uh, speak to us, identify, do we indeed have the uh, potential, business potential to apply the AI in our world, in our business? And if we do, can you please help us put it into the real life? So in the simple words, yeah, so the consulting means not about speaking and talking, it's about joint work with the business. And here is actually a very big difference, yeah? Still, we are, I, I used to be a programmer. My colleague, yeah, so who will, who will present, used to be a programmer, yeah? But now we are consulting. So actually, we need to combine in ourselves, let's say two aspects. One is that understanding that we are not just coding, but we are solving with the means of these technologies. We are solving some specific client problems, and we need to identify that a problem, that business problem. So actually, what what are our clients want to drive with the solutions? So for us, at the end of the day, yeah, we are doing fantastic things with the uh, with the data and artificial intelligence in our office. Yeah, so but still, we are we are thinking, okay, here is my Jira. I like several tasks I can uh, work on, but how to prioritize. And while we do, for instance, prioritization, we're thinking about that end goal of a client. And that's very much important. Yeah, so in-house, you may, you may select the sexiest task. Yeah, so the most technology advanced, interesting, exciting task. But within consulting, you will be thinking about, okay, if I will do that, will it drive a benefit for my client or not? So that's like a very, very much different thinking that's uh yeah as i said unfortunately is not very much so propagated yeah so in the in uh, our universities and um, i'm i'm super happy that we are speaking today about that so uh the great consultant yeah so it's a guy or girl yeah so who actually learn fast yeah um imagine yeah, so, yeah we, we have pretty the same education yeah so but we need to be ahead of our clients we need to be ahead of our clients so that speak and tell them um, how they can apply the technology. So imagine, yeah, so there's like a great company, some kind of uh, a luxury car builder. Yeah, so and uh, imagine they are like very much smart people. Uh, but still, we shall possess some kind of knowledge, yeah, so that we can tell them what they don't know. First, second, yeah, so whenever we are stepping into the class project, yeah, so we may face uh, technologies or uh, systems or approaches that we haven't been uh, 
that had leisure to work with before. And actually, we have just a night before a meeting with a client to learn this stuff and understand this stuff. So actually, why I enjoy consulting is a yeah, and why I've put it in the first yeah. So because being a consulting that means that you are not stopping to learn yeah. So and there is every time a client, every time a slight actually push, it is kind of gentle push but still a push, so that don't don't allow you to stop yeah. So uh, you all the time need to learn. You all the time should have a passion to that yeah. So and actually, thus you get actually something great out of it. I would say. Uh, you admit, okay, I'm consulting a CEO of BMW. Business, yeah? That's a great thing, right? So actually, guys, so actually I'm putting uh, learning fast. Yes, it's very important for being consulting. Uh, yeah, doing. Yeah, so we actually in consult. We are guys about doing. So uh, as I mentioned, yeah, so um, our clients, they're coming to us when they hear something, they trust, yes, or feel that that can be done, but they just don't know how. And they don't know how, and their staff don't know how. So actually, when we are doing consulting, we are helping our business clients to understand the bridge between technologies and the business value. And we help their staff, programmers, the technical, technological people, learn from, from what we are doing by working together. So actually, yeah, I mean, English, yeah, so English is very interesting language. Yeah? So in, um, uh, in, other, in uh, other languages, yeah, so like Latvian and Russian, the word consultation, yeah, so it's about speaking, yeah, so about like saying something, whereas uh, in our world, uh, consultations in many cases are done through the doing things, through the programming. So we're showing the best practices, we are showing to the uh, client people how they indeed can apply it to the yeah, so for the for the best of their uh, of, of their uh, of their target solution. Um, what's 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 great about being a consultant? Yeah, so from one side, speaking to the clients is um, nervous thing. Yeah, of course, you need to go and present to the client. But if you think deeper. Uh, being a consulting and speaking with a, uh, with a client, why are you speaking? Because the client wants to listen. Um, I don't know, maybe it's a magic of Deloitte. Yeah, so on the, yeah, it's for sure Deloitte is one number one uh, consulting firm in the world. Uh, but when I'm coming, which I can tell for myself, yes, when I'm kind of coming to every, any level of, uh, of, of a client, they want to listen. They are actually willing us to listen, and this is um, this is great thing. Yeah, so being in consulting and the technology consulting. Yeah, so uh, people may be finally be not afraid about speaking up. Yeah, um, I don't know how you, but I've been learned. Yeah, so uh, uh, in my previous, let's say first uh, first employment, yeah, so when. A business was saying, ah, oh, you're a techie guys. What do you understand? You don't understand. So just do coding, you know? And actually being a consulting, yeah, so it's finally, it's not a problem anymore, yeah? And uh, yeah, indeed, you can speak up, you can suggest, and clients are listening to that. That actually brings a really much uh, um, good feeling to yourself. So actually your work makes sense not only from technological side, but as well whenever you uh you find the non-perfect things yeah so you you find improvements you can speak out about them yes and clients are actually greedy to listen this topic about evolution of consulting um i would i will start uh, that one small topic also yeah, about presenting our team yes yeah, so, and actually so that you will have a better understanding so um together with Sigur, we are coming from so-called central european nature and uh, actually, the practice of analytics, it started uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, like five years ago. And we went actually to the different other locations. Yeah, so during this year, years and uh, four years ago, we launched as well a team here in Riga. And now we have 130 guys and girls who actually are doing 
uh, I would say, very interesting things. For instance, though, our latest in-house development, uh, it's about um, open source intelligence. It's an engine that is capable on 60 plus languages, analyze open source data. Open source data means uh, news, uh, social media, yeah, so everything that's open, yeah, to analyze it in seven, 60 plus languages and find uh, potentially um, like a bad things, let's put it that way. Yeah, so for instance, you would like to know about a specific company are they doing right or bad things across the globe? Yes, and by using that specific technology, I was think that we have developed as well in our firm, as so we can do it in the 60 plus languages. Yeah, so such kind of things we are doing as well, for, for sure, are uh, uh, consulting our clients. Yeah, so and uh, it's a kind of, I would say, a pity. It's a pity for me that uh, in our Central European region, there are not so much clients. Yeah, so that. Uh, uh, and businesses who are uh, very much evolved uh, to employ, let's say, um, AI at the same scale like Netflix did. Um, from one side, it's a pity. From another side, it's a very great opportunity. Yeah, so because we are uh, we are doing uh, our analytics projects with uh, clients in Germany, in Nordics, in UK, uh, in Italy. So actually, in uh, uh, with a great and big and big companies. So. Um, that's uh, this is fantastic. You are like in, in Riga, but you're working actually and doing stuff for for guys in Germany. So in this uh, this kind of release, yeah. So of uh, uh, of what uh, uh, what services uh, we do do for our clients, yeah. And here actually you can you can see it easily, yeah. So that any any journey with AI starts with AI strategy, yeah. So and. Uh, Still, we are, we are programmers, yeah? So just keep in mind, yeah? So for instance, our teams, yeah, we are programmers, but we can speak, yeah? So, and design together with our clients, the strategical approaches towards their journeys in analytics and artificial intelligence. We do as well, data analytics modernization, uh, sounds nice, yeah? So at the end of the day, we are building data lakes, yeah? We are consolidating that data, yeah? Uh, I think mentioned yes in his presentation that yeah sometimes you need to have a big data yeah so but okay how you can store that videos texts yeah so like images yeah so unstructured data and together with the structured tables yeah so actually this is uh, this sold by uh, by our data platforms that we are building and many many other things yeah so that we are doing so actually and. In our evolution, let's say, of our consulting and our analytics, what we are doing, yeah, it was actually emerging one by one. First, first, yeah, so everyone wanted to have AI algorithms to be developed and, and uh, installed in the client premises so that AI works, AI do stuff. Wow, great, fantastic thing. Then we understood, okay, if you don't have your data in the right form, if you don't have the right data governance, if you don't know about data lineage, there is not a big sense actually about having let's say, dozens of AI algorithms just working and uh, doing some stuff because you cannot trust them because you don't know and understand your data. Then actually emerge these data platforms that we are like to study to do. Uh, so then strategy and uh, new new things are adding up. So um, the evolution of consulting is every time a slightly ahead of what actually business is doing right now. It's somehow uh, tied it as well with the higher education. So what you are taught, you will be doing at your workplaces, let's say, in maybe two, three years, yeah, so from today. And actually, this is really much uh, great thing. So I think this is what we haven't explored, by the way, yeah, so that the consulting and, uh, and then university and education, they do have very much common, yeah, so then different, yeah, so even in that sense. Um, so how, uh, how, how, how we started, yeah, so and, uh, how the, uh, how our specific analytics consulting actually evolved, yeah. Um, uh, you know that, uh, about this data warehouse content, yeah, it's a traditional way of storing data, uh, and the traditional way, let's say, to, uh, to have, uh, to have the data, let's say, in your, in your organizations, or as it's called in-house. Yeah, so you have a huge servers, you store that data on that huge servers. 
that's actually a fantastic thing, yeah. So, but uh, but it's in in the one place. You need people there. You need to be everyone set it in the in that place. And imagine if it would be staying in that same way. In and this COVID came, yeah. So every business would be stopping. So actually, it was very nice that people continue to evolve, yeah. So and uh, yeah, we we experienced that so-called great shift. Yeah, so we experienced that great shift where we moved to the clouds, where we started to uh, where we started to work uh, not just from the offices. Yeah, so and actually we as well answered on that. Uh, we as well answered on that, and we were quite happy because a year before the pandemic, we launched so-called cloud readiness initiative. Uh, we have prepared our uh, our consultant people uh, to be cloud savvy. <laughs> yeah, no one knew about this pandemic. Yeah? So when the pandemic came, uh, and we sat at home, yeah. So and our clients said, "Look, we must do something so that we still be doing things. We will still be doing business. We'll still be providing value for our clients." And we, we are eager. We we have. We've been quite quite happy about that because in three, in three months, imagine, yeah. So I just remember May uh, 2020, uh, we went lockdown, and in three months, uh, in June, uh, our clients returned back and saying, "Look, uh, we are doing that shift to the clouds, yeah. So can you help us?" And this is the pretty of consulting, yeah. So that you need to be ahead, yeah. So like several years ahead, yeah. You need to prepare yourself. You need to learn constantly. And uh, that's what we did. We've been um, needed for our clients, and we could uh, give them a hand. And actually, we made a, we made a huge transformation from um, having a portfolio of let's say that traditional first step, yeah. Like 80% of the projects were like they were housed big data stuff in house. In three months, we made this great shift so that the same like a 90% portfolio will be now in the cloud. And what I want to emphasize here or for you as a being a student, so what would be important for you guys? So um, pay attention to the cloud technologies, pay attention to the services that are available in the clouds uh, in the cloud providers. Of course, you need to know the stuff, yeah, so from the entires, but still think of uh, how you can employ it as well in the in the cloud. So uh, what we can expect, what we can expect next. Um, I started to speak about the clouds. Um, I hope you know the concept of operating system. Yeah. So um, I just looked here. Yeah. So that I was thinking, would you or would you punish me for the I'm calling operating system? Yeah. So for the clouds, I'm not. I'm not mixing, and I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not making a mistake here. Trust me. So look, what is happening now? Yeah. So and what will continue, and wh where you will find us yourself, and uh, where we will continue to live. Um, all innovations they are they are happening as a spiral. Yeah, we all the time going up and up, but still, let's say we can find ourselves in the same spot. You know, all the time. Um, there was such concept uh, on the very early stages of uh, computer science, so-called thin clients. Yeah, there was a server somewhere like a mainframe, and the laptop. Yeah, so it was nothing more than a mouse. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and the keys, yeah, so with monitor, no processing, almost no processing power, yeah. And uh, the, same, um, the same is happening now, specifically in AI space, uh, specifically connected with, uh, with, with neural networks and deep learning. Uh, I could not imagine, yeah, so that uh, all data scientists, all AI, Specialists, yes, who are working with uh, uh, deep neural networks, yeah, so would have uh, money to purchase so sophisticated and difficult hardware. 
and keep them in, in, in the house. Uh, many things, many aspects, uh, and the uh, majority of aspects now in the business are driven by data. To mention the Finland, for instance, they have, uh, they have said, so any law that is made should be a data behind it. It should be trusted by data, it should be backed up by data. And imagine the amounts of the data, yeah? so and the decisions that are making based on the data now, nowadays are becoming more and more. And for that reason, yeah, so we'll see that clouds are paying, are playing much bigger roles than just the virtual machines that we can order or the services that we can use. Yeah? But we'll find ourselves as well working mostly yeah, so with the standardized tools uh, in the clouds because the level of sophistication, level of the data, amounts of the data and sophistication of processing would be just not enough for one PC or one laptop. So that's an, another aspect that I wanted to emphasize here. So uh, look into the cloud that it's not just a tool that we need to know nowadays, but as well, it will be an operating system of tomorrow. Yeah, so, and this type of thin clients approach, yeah, so will as well uh, return to us. I can actually mention, yeah, so one, one thing, yeah. So when I was, when I um, studied uh, at Deloitte, I was given a quite nice laptop, i7 core, yeah, so like a multi, multi core one, fantastic two, fantastic laptop. It was like a flying, everything was flying there, yeah. Everything was great. I mean, after two years, after several updates of Windows and Teams, yeah, so I could able to run only two programs on my laptop, Teams and Outlook, nothing else. <laughs> and this i7, yeah, so uh, laptop. So actually, learn, learn, learn cloud, yeah, so and uh, learn how to work on the clouds and how to use it for your best, yeah, uh, because in, uh, in the real world scenarios, yeah, um, like a personal PCs, yes, and uh, something in house, yes, so will not be sufficient for us. Yeah, and um, what will what we can uh, what we can see, let's say in a, I would say three and five years uh, frontier from now, uh, it's a big convergence between data engineering and data science. Uh, now we somehow separate them. So data engineering and data science are somehow separate. Okay, data science are more like a vanilla people who are, uh, like to work with the models, yeah, who like to work with, a, um, with the data points. And data engineers are those nerds, yeah, so who are doing, let's say, data pipelines, big data consolidations, data vaulting, and all the things. But you know that what is emerging now, uh, AI industrialization uh, is a profession uh, is slightly emerging. Uh, in the US, it's already emerged, yes, and there is a, like a job ads, yes, so for AI industrialization people. And uh, these specialists, yeah, so are, uh, are people who combine in themselves, yes, yeah? so, and here I completely agree with what Dmitry said, yes, yeah? so about, yeah, data science and AI nowadays is not about math, it's about having the already made and trusted, let's say, algorithms but be able uh, to tweak them so that it will be useful for your, uh, for your applications. And actually this convergence between data engineering and data science means that what we need to be able for the future is to not only select the right algorithm for our concrete problem, but we'll be able to in, put it into the production. So gain the value out of it and most probably uh, make it uh, possible to run it uh, automatically. Look, uh, I would like to end up my uh, my presentation uh, with one thing. Yeah, so uh, speaking about AI, what does it mean AI? Uh, I, I would I would emphasize like a two two meanings of AI. First, yeah, so it's a business meaning of AI. Yeah? Uh, is a system, yeah, so that can behave like a human, meaning it can see, it can comprehend, it can hear. And uh, more academical, AI is a system yeah, so that can adapt to the changing environment. So, and I'm actually adept of a second thing, 
and the AI industrialization, a job of tomorrow, yeah, so will be the, the stuff, yeah, so that will be uh, focusing on creating truly AI -ish systems so that actually can adapt to the changing environment and work without the human intervention. So this is our future. We are speaking about AI, but still the true AI still in three, five years from today. And you have a fantastic opportunity to learn that stuff yeah, so, and practice and be relevant for the future of the analytics. Thank you very much. Uh, guys, I'm very much sorry. Okay, I need to go, yeah, but my colleagues will be here. So actually any questions you can ask, uh, ask them, Alex, Igor. Yeah, so I'll be happy if you would like to reach out by phone or email. Yeah, yeah, and now we can say that we are providing consulting for our students because it's exactly what uh, Roman said. We are just, not just saying something, presenting something, but also we are showing how it works and how it can be used. And so it's time to our next presentation. Uh, it will be provided by Alexander Putnikovic, uh, who is AI and uh, big data senior consultant yeah, at Deloitte. Yeah. yeah, and as I understand, he uh, was involved and is involved into implementation of many cloud platforms for Deloitte clients. So he knows how to implement it. Yeah, and how to, uh, yeah, how to make it as a product. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, a lot of uh, my colleagues have talked a lot of about algorithms and clever things, smart things. But uh, in reality, after you will go to the market, there is a very high demand of uh, actual data engineers. And in Deloitte, we started uh, Deloitte Academy. And that's more of uh, uh, cloud data engineering. Uh, so data is growing. There's a lot of data. And uh, the problem for big companies, for uh, enterprises, is that they have a lot of different systems. They have some customer systems. They have CRMs. Uh, they have APIs. Um, and um, they uh, basically, so bring in value for a uh, fancy algorithm or, or any data model or to create a very good um, report. You need to collect the data, aggregate it, shape it, clean it. And um, that's what we do uh, in, uh, as a data engineers. Um, Romans also mentioned that we are moving uh, uh, more like we are merging uh, data science and data engineers. That is also correct, and that that is uh, most of all thanks to the new cloud platforms. Uh, uh, cloud platforms, cloud services, give us an um, environment where we can uh, uh, experiment and create uh, and shape data together. Um, previously, it was data engineers were working on their orchestrations or. Uh, doing ETLs and uh, data centers were doing Jupyter notebooks. Uh, but now we have this unified cloud platform where we doing mainly everything. Of course, uh, they, there will be probably specification and uh, deviation between uh, our specialties, data science and, and then data engineers. Uh, not, not, not that we will be doing everything, right? So, um, Yeah, and uh, based on the last trends uh, in LinkedIn, it's very, uh, the demand is very high. Um, so more from the practice, you would need, you now in real life, you would need like at least two, three data engineers per one data scientist, even, even more. Uh, depends on the uh, client data. So in, uh, Academy, we have six weeks course. Uh, so don't be scared that six weeks, uh, it's very long. Actually, uh, we have one lecture in a week and uh, one homework. So uh, there will be an overview uh, of the topic. Uh, so there are seven, six topics. Uh, overall introduction of data engineering, what we're doing then there's architectural uh, questions, data warehouse, data lake, 
uh, the goal. Uh, and uh, the tools that we're using, Spark, uh, Data Factory, Azure Databricks, Azure Synapse. Um, these are the main services that uh, are having more trend. I, I know AWS is the biggest cloud, but uh, what we see from the clients lately is that uh, there's more demand coming for the Azure and uh, GCP is also catching up. Maybe probably we will have in future all three uh, all three uh, cloud academies. Um, but yeah, Azure is more trending these days, um, and uh, uh, that's why we're mainly focusing on on this. So after six uh, weeks, uh, after you complete all the homeworks, uh, there, there, there is not so much of uh, learning uh, going like, like you're going into the lectures. Uh, we treat all our employees as uh, professionals. And uh, we think that we are all grown people. We know how to work. Uh, and that's what we also expect from you. So, uh, and, as also Igor mentioned, that um, getting uh, uh, tra make, uh, finding like solutions to the problems and adjust uh, adjust learn fast all these topics that were uh, that that's what we need basically from the people. And um, so th there will be provided some goals, uh, some tasks for you, and uh, it will be more of your journey. You will be able to touch the services you will be you, you will basically know the flow of the data in the cloud and uh, uh, for the candidate requirements it's very simple it, it's uh, data engineering it's not it's not very hard so you would need a basic scripting programming language ideally it would be python uh, uh, or scala um, um, but uh, all others are okay. It's Python is pretty simple. You can adjust to it very fast. Um, yeah, and then the SQL uh, is mainly uh, the main uh, component for the main language where, because a lot of clients have already SQL databases, SQL data warehouse, they have these called uh, platforms and they just want to move to the cloud. Uh, so ideally, Data engineers should know a little bit on-prem solutions and of course cloud solutions. And uh, this is uh, due to this year we are starting. Um, this is like a test test version. Due to our company uh, policies, uh, we cannot provide you with the uh, Azure credentials and your own uh, uh, environment. But uh, so the Azure gives an option for a trial version so ideally if you would not if you haven't tried azure you can register get it for free and uh, uh, this uh, otherwise it will be hard to uh, complete the tasks so uh, and azure gives one year free trial version yeah and how to apply um, there's a barcode up here you can uh, register um, provide your credentials uh, link to linkedin profile uh, i think there will be also some barcode and links uh, outside that was uh, very short thank you for presenting this opportunity this uh, perfect opportunity to improve your uh, knowledge about cloud computing and cloud services and uh, actually, it was uh, the last presentation for our event. And now it's a good time to take a coffee or something else and have a personal discussion on things related to data analytics, artificial intelligence, education, industrial applications, or whatever you want. So it was a pleasure for me to host this event. Let's go for a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>